Okay, um, the recording has started. We can uh, begin. Uh, would anyone like to lead in prayer today before we get into our subject? and especially to hear us once again. Uh, you speak to us through a once again. And how can we be understanding your words, give your consideration forward and understanding for your knowledge? And how can we be stories of our minds in your words? And how can we apply in our daily lives in words? Thank you, Father. And especially, uh, I ask you for Holy Spirit, your helps is healthy. And I ask you in the name of Jesus, Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sabita. Uh, we were discussing on a very important subject. And um, uh, last time I explained regarding intercession and uh, Jesus Christ, our intercessor. We saw how intercession is about praying for people standing in the gap for other people but the lord jesus did a work of intercession do you remember that we were discussing about the work of intercession how jesus hung on the cross and um, uh, what did he do on the cross he carried remember we talked about that right he carried our sins he carried our sicknesses so uh, when we look at that scripture from Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 12, where it says, He bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word bore there is uh, nasa, which means to lift up or to lift away the burden. Um, now, uh, when we look at the word intercession in the Hebrew, it is the word paga or it is to meet so we said that what did jesus do jesus met with god uh, to mediate isn't it so on behalf of man uh, jesus went to the father and he he um, interceded okay the other thing is he carried the burdens that's also another thing that we said and then we said that um, because of what he has done on the cross, he has confronted the powers of darkness. So, what is intercession today? Same thing. What do we do? Uh, whatever Jesus did on the cross, we are doing that in prayer. So, we go to the Father on behalf of uh, other people, people's needs. One thing. Second, we carry their burdens. Maybe, you know, somebody has some problem, some difficulty. So we pray for them. That means that we are carrying their burdens. Just the way Jesus did the work of intercession, we are praying. And that is the intercession that we engage in. So we are carrying somebody's burdens. And what else do we, um, you know, get out of that intercession? Victory. Satan is already defeated. But when we intercede for people, they will see victory in their lives. Okay, So um, it's very similar to what Jesus did. Just that we, we cannot perform that work of redemption. Jesus has already done it. And the Bible says uh, he's the only mediator between God and man for the forgiveness of our sins. So nobody can do the work that Jesus has done. Okay, that kind of intercession we cannot do. He has already done it. Now, if we study the book of Hebrews, it says uh, one sacrifice forever. So there is no need for anyone else to do what Jesus has done because what he has done is 100%. He has completed the work. What did he say when he was hanging on the cross? What did Jesus say about the work? It is finished. Right? Tetelestai. He said that because there was nothing else left to do to forgive the sin of mankind. So today, we don't need anybody to come and redeem us because that Jesus has already done. But in what he has done, there is a pattern. Okay, there is a pattern. That pattern is what we are applying in prayer. So 
he went to the father on behalf of mankind we go to the father on behalf of people he carried our sin sickness burdens we carry other people's burdens he won the victory over satan today through our prayer we are releasing victory into people's lives so that's the comparison when we talk about intercession and intercession is something that is so key um, that god calls us to do we saw last time that um, even though uh, god already knows our prayers and uh, the fact that uh, jesus is our high priest now he's our eternal high priest he's interceding for us but still we are supposed to pray remember jesus said i'm not going to do your praying you have to do your praying which means you and i we still have to pray just because jesus is our intercessor up in heaven uh, you can't um, let go of prayer and assume or imagine that jesus is going to do all the praying and you don't have to do any of it right so uh, jesus is our intercessor that's true he uh, backs up our prayers he backs up our confession but we still have to pray because that's what jesus told us to do remember there are so many instructions he says when you pray pray like this right when you pray pray our father in heaven which means we are supposed to pray uh, and uh, we cannot just say that uh, jesus as our high priest replaces our um, our uh, ministry of prayer now let's read more about intercession last time i said that um, intercession is very important um, when we care for the people uh, and especially those who are caring as leaders so if there are leaders who are appointed over god's people one primary responsibility is to pray or to intercede to go to god on behalf of the people we see in the life of abraham remember we saw that he was an intercessor sodom and gomorrah god wanted to destroy but uh, uh, when god told uh, abraham i am going to destroy what did abraham do what did he do intercession he went and he spoke to god okay he started discussing with god going back and forth for the safety and protection of that place but ultimately whatever abraham asked that minimum also was not there in that uh, city so god had to finally destroy but think about this you know god is so good that he is revealing his plan beforehand to man okay he's already letting somebody know and abraham what do we generally term abraham as anyone father okay uh, in his yes in his relationship with god he is known as the friend of god abraham is the friend of god and the bible says that god reveals his secrets to those who fear him so when we walk closely with the lord uh, there are times where god will show us certain things and i told us last time what to do when god shows us prophetic revelation comes what to do first thing to do prayer okay so when we receive um information revelation from god god speaks to us he expects us to pray that's the most important thing that is why he's revealing it to us now over and above suppose there is something in that which we are supposed to communicate that is separate okay after we have done our praying we can uh communicate to whoever is concerned so that's how we are supposed to uh take uh, charge of the revelation that god gives us so in this manner god speaks to his people and when we pray he even hears our prayer just think about it okay, imagine this who is abraham abraham is a man he's a human being god is god almighty god Abraham is talking to God and saying God please don't do this. And what does God do? Does he listen? He listens. So that is amazing for us that God is actually responding to the prayers of a man. 
Now Abraham is saying, God, please don't do this. If there are, you know, whatever, 50 righteous people, will you spare the land? And it's almost like a negotiation. Like God is willing to listen. He says, okay, if there are, then that's okay. We won't destroy. Uh, then again, Abraham knows there are not so many. So how about if there are so many righteous people? God listens. God listens. Right? God listens. So that's another very important thing for us. When we pray for people, God is listening. Okay? God is listening. And uh, uh, it, it's not that we are, uh, you know, changing God's mind or anything like that because uh, it is already in God's nature to give mercy and grace. Okay? Mercy is something that, you know, uh, we deserve a punishment. But mercy is, God says, okay, no punishment. That is mercy. Right? Grace is, uh, we don't deserve the blessing, but he still gives it. That is grace. So mercy and grace are in the nature of God. And that is why God is listening to Abraham. Because not that, uh, you know, Abraham is trying to change Almighty God's mind, Almighty God's decision. It's not like that. It's already in the nature of God that he is a God who shows mercy. And that is why God is actually listening to him. So the things which God, um, you can say, permits, right? We can intercede about those matters and God will listen. God will uh, respond. So Abraham interceded. There was a time when he interceded for King Abimelech. What did he intercede for? Anyone? Any idea? Abimelech? What did he ask God for Abimelech? Something was... Uh... For children, ma'am? Uh, yeah, correct. Children. So um, Abimelech sinned against God. And because of which God had um, shut the wombs, it says, of, um, you know, the, the women and the, even the cattle. So uh, Abimelech repents of his evil thought of, uh, <coughs> you know, having uh, Sarah. He doesn't realize that she is married to Abraham. And then when he repents, Abraham prays. Abraham prays for Abimelech. That is intercession. He intercedes and he asks God for healing. So Abraham actually prays for healing uh, uh, for the women and for the cattle and everything. And then, as Lucy said, um, God gave them the ability to uh, procreate once again. So this is what uh, we see in the life of Abraham, a man who interceded for others, who prayed for others. Now Moses, Moses is another classic example prayed for the people. Uh, I've shared already how, um, you know, it was tough to lead these people because, you know, they were not listening. They were doing their own thing. Uh, and each time, you know, it was a battle for Moses to really uh, guide these people and lead them. Uh, but whenever God was upset or angry with them, he pleads with God. He says, God, please forgive, you know, your people, your people. You, know, you need to uh, uh, forgive them and uh, don't fun punish them and things like that. So when he prays, God relents, God hears. And uh, the, the wrath that God, uh, you know, uh, wants to um, put on these people and destroy them, that is taken away and they receive God's mercy. Uh, remember in Hosea 12, 13, when we learned about the word um, shamar, preserved through a prophet, right? Israel was preserved. Who is this prophet? Who is this prophet? Hosea 12 and verse 13. We already discussed it in a prophetic prayer class. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet, he was preserved. Who is this prophet? Which uh, prophet brought the Israelites out? Moses. I, I was wondering whether you all need... Elijah. Elijah. Uh, assisted, uh, it is uh, Moses. Because uh, God led the Israelites 
through his leadership, right? So it's Moses, but the scriptures also call him um, a prophet because he heard from God. Okay, so Moses, uh, and he prayed and God heard him. Uh, the next section here is about people needing intercessors. And we talked about Job, right? In Job's difficulties, he, he was so desperate that uh, uh, he was hoping somebody will be praying for him. And even today, uh, when, you know, God calls us, uh, we can pray for others. See, the uh, wonderful thing about prayer, we'll discuss later in the ministry of prayer, there's no distance in prayer. You got it? So suppose, you know, I want to go and I want to, um, you know, give something. Let's say there has been a disaster and people need food, people need clothes. We need to go there, okay? And then physically be present there to give them something materially. Uh, but even before that can happen, we can still bless them. How can we do that? We can pray for them. And when we pray, the advantage is there's no distance in prayer. We can pray for people who are sitting right next to us. We can pray for people who are in the campus. We can pray for people on the road right now. Or even people who are in faraway nations. Uh, it doesn't matter who we are praying for. It's always effective. So there is no distance as far as prayer is concerned. And so we can uphold people, especially who may be in need or especially those who may be in some sort of a crisis situation, crisis or uh, a difficult situation, right? We can pray for them and God will help them. Remember, we said mercy, grace. So we can plead with God and say, God, release your power. Or we can pray against the work of uh, Satan in their lives so that victory is seen. So this is the way in which we can pray. So uh, can someone please read uh, uh, Isaiah 59 verse 16 and one more person, Ezekiel 22 and verse 30. If you can turn in your Bibles and read it aloud, that may be good. Okay, uh, just a, a point to... Uh, students here, I think the audio is low. They are saying audio is low online. Could you please check? Okay, who's um, open Isaiah? Sure, you can read it. He saw that there was no one. He was uh, appalled that there was no one to intervene. Okay, so he saw that there was no one to uh, intercede. So when God looked for an intercessor, God, what does it tell us about God? God looked for an intercessor. What does it tell us about God? So his own arm achieved salvation for him, and his own righteousness uh, sustained him. That's all right. But what does it tell us about God? And it says he looked for an intercessor. Hmm? Yeah? Yeah, his righteousness and uh, uh, the fact that uh, God is open for someone to intercede. And he is expecting someone to intercede. You got it? So it's not um, new when we intercede for someone. God will not be taken by surprise. He, in fact, wants it when we intercede for others. Now, let's read Ezekiel 22 and verse 30. What does it say? Ezekiel 22, verse 30. Yes. And I saw for a man among them who, saw, who should build up the wall 
and stand in the bridge before me for the land the I, I should not destroy it but I found wrong. okay so God again in a situation where judgment uh, is coming he says I looked for a man to stand in the gap same thing go to God on behalf of the people that is what stand in the gap is now you tell me how many people is God looking for in this case one person can you imagine just one person if they pray God is saying that uh, he will not destroy the land okay so that's really great that God is giving man this opportunity that we can pray for um, a whole region a nation uh, we can pray for um, uh, you know what uh, nations even one person praying it makes a huge impact we will learn about some of these people later when we go um, let me just check if there is the quote of one particular person Okay, so this is a man called uh, John Knox, um, who was one of uh, one of the greatest prayer warriors during the Reformation, and uh, he was famous for crying out to God and praying. He used to pray for Scotland, and his prayer was—I mean, it was very um, uh, sort of extreme. Uh, but it's people know it because this is how he prayed. He said. Give me Scotland, Lord, or I die. Okay, so he was so determined for his land uh, that his land should um, know God. So he prayed like that. He used to pray for his land. Okay, um, and it is said that uh, the Queen at that time, Queen Mary of the Scots, uh, she made a statement. She said, "I fear John Knox's prayers." more than all the assembled armies of Europe. Can you imagine? One man, his prayers. Because she, they would have seen the power of prayer through the life of how many people? I can't hear you. One person, right? John Knox in this case. So the point that I'm trying to make is when we talk about intercession, even if there is one person, who is committed to prayer we can impact entire regions entire you know nation nations it's possible because god says i looked for one man to stand in the gap so that i should not destroy so god is giving us this wonderful opportunity if he puts a burden on our hearts to pray for people we should take it up don't worry about, you know, um, uh, how can I do it? Don't worry about all that. If God is calling you to pray, go ahead and pray. Imagine if one person can pray and it can be so powerful. The queen is saying, I don't, I'm not afraid of the assembled armies of Europe. I'm afraid of the prayers of John Knox. Right? Uh, so when we all get together and pray, one man's prayer is so powerful, you imagine if we all pray together with one heart, how powerful that can be. So in from history, we've seen there are many such stories. Uh, you know, we, we look into them one by one. Uh, but intercession is powerful and God is calling us to intercede. Um, so yeah, we've seen the fact that we can, uh, even one person can pray. Uh, in uh, Jeremiah 29, 7, it says God wants us to pray uh, God wanted people to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So God called people to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. He gave that responsibility to the people to pray for the city. Even today, wherever we are, whichever city we are in, we are supposed to pray for that city, pray for the peace, pray for the prosperity, blessing of that city. It's our responsibility. Isaiah 62 verses 6 and 7 um, God says, you know, I, ha I have set watchmen on the walls 
of Jerusalem. They will, uh, okay, maybe somebody can read it. Isaiah 62 verses 6 and 7. You're there? Yeah, please read. I have placed a watchman on, on your walls, Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourself no rest. And give him no rest till he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. Okay, so what is God saying? I've set watchmen on the walls, O Jerusalem. Okay, and um, there's no rest. You don't take any rest. You don't give God any rest. How, how is it that we can labor without any rest? Through prayer. So the watchman here is not your usual watchman whom we tell to sit and uh, guard the city. We are the spiritual watchmen. When we pray, what happens? We are the spiritual watchmen, right? So when we pray, it's like spiritually, we allow and we stop through our prayers. That's what God is saying. You are the watchman for the city. When you pray, evil will not come in. When you pray, blessing will come in. Okay? It's all this kind of authority is given to us as believers. And that is why we have to pray. We have to pray for our city. We have to pray for our state. We have to pray for our nation. And, uh, you know, God will work. So God is always looking for intercessors everywhere to pray. And uh, uh, so for us, it's important to rise up as intercessors. Uh, so when we pray, we can extend God's mercy, especially for those who are going away from God. We have seen that uh, leaders like Moses have prayed for those who were not listening. And um, here we, we find uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 16. Uh, it says that it is possible to pray for those who commit sin. Okay? It's possible for us to pray for those who commit sin so that God extends his mercy. But uh, it also says that, you know, sometimes there are sins that lead to death, meaning those are the extreme cases when people are um, so unrepentant that even when God is convict, the Holy Spirit is convicting them, they are still doing the same thing, right? Uh, so at one point, this is not normal, what uh, 1 John 5, 6 talks about. Uh, normal, regular believers, you know, we, we may not come in this category, but when we become so hard in our hearts, that even though the word is saying, Holy Spirit is saying, the community of faith is speaking to us and saying, you need to change, you need to change. We say, no, forget it. I won't. Right? So there is at one point the possibility of uh, uh, committing, you know, sin uh, leading to death. At, at that point, uh, the writer says, even if you pray, no use. Right? Don't even pray for such a person because they have gone beyond the limit beyond the limit. But uh, as I said, it's a rare thing, rare, you know, one of here, there, very rarely people reach this extreme. But in general, in general, uh, when somebody is sinning, we can pray for them. We can pray so that God can extend his mercy, God can forgive them, and God can uh, bring them back into uh, his ways. So. It's a good thing for us to pray for those who are wandering away from God and, uh, you know, bring them back. James chapter 5, verse 19 and 20, I will read it. It says, Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. So there is this possibility of praying for those who are going away from God um, as well as, you know, speaking into their lives to bring them back. Now, when it comes to intercession, we can uh, get God's help. Um, and the best way in which we can get God's help is through his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God, um, we will uh, study. I think you already have subject, right? The Holy Spirit. And in the subject, you may have seen the various um, features or the functions, the work of the Holy Spirit. One of the works 
of the Holy Spirit is intercession. So his name itself, see, when we read about the Holy Spirit, you will uh, see that he is a comforter. He is a counselor. Right? Uh, he reveals things to us. Uh, so you see the works that the Holy Spirit does. One of the works which the Holy Spirit does is he's an intercessor. He's an intercessor. So uh, Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10. I think uh, maybe somebody from online can read Zechariah 12 and verse 10. And uh, also Romans 8 verse 26 and 27. Two different people can pick up the passages and read it aloud. Romans 8, 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Um, so a uh, couple of things we see here is that the Spirit himself helps us in our weaknesses. Okay, and um, uh, like he makes intercession for us. So we'll look into it um, soon. What about Zechariah 12 and verse 10? Anyone? Zechariah 12 verse 10. Yes. And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem hmm. a spirit of grace and a pleas for mercy, so that when they look on me, on him whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over a firstborn. Okay. Thank you, uh, Sister uh, Deepu. I want to check with you what version was that? NIV? Yes. NIV. Okay. Uh, that's good. Now, in the uh, NIV version, it says the spirit of grace and mercy, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Spirit of grace and mercy. Now, in the NKJV version, um, it's posted in the chat. Uh, Cyril has posted. Thank you for that. Uh, he says, sorry. Yeah, spirit of grace and supplication. Remember, we said supplication is an earnest request which we make to God. So what is one of the names for the Holy Spirit? He's the spirit of supplication. Now, when we intercede uh, at one point, we may feel um, weak in our own uh, humanness to continue to intercede for someone. Okay, uh, and that's true because uh, maybe we have exhausted our uh, human capacity to pray for someone, but we can get help. Holy Spirit, one of the names of the Holy Spirit is, is a spirit of supplication, spirit of grace and supplication. So uh, even before we intercede, we can ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me. So when we ask the Holy Spirit to help us, we will be able to effectively pray for others. Are you all understanding? Yeah. So, uh, yes, we recognize that our um, maybe human capacity is not as much as we require, but we can be empowered or helped by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Because he is the spirit of supplication, or in other words, we can also say he's a spirit of intercession. So depend on the Holy Spirit in order to do intercession. And Romans 8 verses 26 and 27, where it says that the Spirit helps, helps us in our weaknesses. When we read that word um, help in the Greek, it's a long word. I don't even know how to pronounce. Uh, okay, I don't know Greek. So I don't think I can pronounce that word. But the meaning of that word is given for us. It says to take hold against together with. Okay, to take hold uh, against together with. Um, now, if you break that up, the understanding that we get is 
uh, it's as if the Holy Spirit is coming to help us to take hold of us um, and protect us when uh, there is something like an attack. Okay. Um, actually, maybe I don't know if um, uh, in the Holy Spirit class, Pastor Jake's already done this. Have you done that arm wrestle? Anyone? Okay. So, um, yeah, we can do that. So I just need uh, three volunteers quickly. We don't have time. So just come quickly. Okay, who are the three volunteers? Okay, come, come. But uh, for the online audience, I don't know if you can see me or see us. Uh, okay, don't worry about it. Maybe I'll explain to the online people what we are doing or how will you adjust? Okay, good. Um, so we have to do an arm wrestle. So one of you will be a child of God. You pick. Whoever wants to be child of God? Okay, Cyril is a child of God. And uh, uh, we need somebody to be Satan, to fight with him or attack him. So I leave it to you. I'm not saying you only decide who wants to be. Just for the just for the activity, just for the activity, Nelson is going to be Satan. Okay, okay, child of God and Satan, no problem. Come, come here. The people here uh, online cannot see. Fine. So, child of God, Satan, right? So you got to arm wrestle. Okay. So uh, why don't you try? Maybe you'll have to do it here because they won't be able to see otherwise. Come here to this corner, otherwise, forget uh, online people. Sorry, everyone, I'll explain to you. So just do it. Yeah, you'll have to do. OK, give Satan a little bit of opportunity so that in the activity, at least, he can try to attack you more. Oh. <laughs> Okay, we'll stop this. I think I have to talk for a second. Some match fixing. Don't do this. It's not a godly thing to do. So. Okay, fine. So now that I talk to uh, Nelson, at least stand here, Nelson and uh, Cyril. So the online people couldn't see. But uh, what happened was um, Nelson, uh, because of the attack of the of uh, Satan, he was losing, right? So he, he's actually not able to fight the devil uh, well enough. He's losing, okay? Now we said the spirit helps us in our weaknesses. And we explained that word help. Help is to take hold of against. Okay, so now we will just imagine all imagination. This, this is all just for a few moments. We'll imagine Joseph is the Holy Spirit. Okay, so Joseph, please come. Yeah, so what we will do is we will repeat the same thing, but now Holy Spirit will help the child of God. So you'll have a uh, the child of God fighting the devil, but Holy Spirit also has to come and you have to give some support to the child of God. And we'll see how well the, the devil or Satan can keep up with the power. Okay, so are you ready? Go ahead. Don't break the table. That's all. You have to go behind him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Fine. That was very easy. So thank you so much, uh, guys. Um, 
we just saw uh, online people, I'm explaining to you. So Joseph came and he helped Nelson. So Cyril, um, almost immediately, you know, he lost. So uh, it is like that when we work with the Holy Spirit. Now, sometimes as children of God, we may feel like I'm losing. I don't have the power. But the Holy Spirit, who is he? He's the, who is he? Helper, right? The helper. He comes. Even when it comes to intercession, when we receive the help of the Holy Spirit, we may be weak. But when the Holy Spirit comes to help us, we can win over the devil. Okay? So that's the way it, it works even in our lives. So thank you so much. Thank you. You're okay, Cyril? Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, so that was just for us to kind of get a picture. When we say uh, together, take hold of together against. So Holy Spirit is standing with us. Or you can have another picture. Have you seen um, when uh, maybe a child goes to school and the child comes back home and tells the parent that all the big children are uh, bullying me. They are, they are doing this to me. They are doing that to me. What happens? The mom or the dad, they, they get so angry. They go with their child. They literally protect their child. And if there's a bully, a big kid, they're ready to fight with that kid. Right? So it's something like that. The Holy Spirit. He takes hold of us. He takes hold of us together with us against the enemy or the devil. And that's what uh, Paul is telling. Paul is saying, the Holy Spirit is your helper. The Holy Spirit Holy is our helper. So when we fight the enemy, we can take the help of the Holy Spirit, um, not just for external enemies, but also for internal. Sometimes the flesh... The weaknesses of the flesh are our enemy. And we think, oh, how can I overcome? How can I become the person that God is calling me to become on my own? It's difficult. But when we take the help of the Holy Spirit, even in our weaknesses, fleshly weaknesses, we can overcome. Okay. Uh, was there a question? I thought someone uh, unmuted to say something. Yeah. Okay, not really. That's fine. Let's go on. <coughs> so, the Holy Spirit. Now, because we're talking about intercession, okay? How does he help us in intercession, anyone? Hmm? Yes. So, one is he can strengthen our prayer. He can enable us to pray, you know, pray more. But also we have seen about the uh, ability to pray in the spirit, right? So when we pray in tongues, that is another way to actually overcome the devil. Because we are praying with the power of the Holy Spirit. So every time we are praying in the spirit, you can imagine like what we were doing over here. The Holy Spirit is coming. He's giving us the utterances to pray the right prayers, to pray the perfect prayers. And though Satan may be, uh, you know, happy that he's uh, attacking us and causing us trouble, the Holy Spirit will defeat the devil. Okay, uh, so uh, he takes hold of us as our helper and we can pray in the spirit. So if we want the help of the Holy Spirit as an intercessor or the spirit of supplication, Pray a lot in the spirit. See, again, we're going back to the power of praying in the Holy Spirit or praying in tongues. So in this way, we can overcome. Uh, and um, yeah, just a few more things about intercession. Um, and then we'll close. Uh, it says that in order for us to be successful in intercession, what do you think um, we need? What are some qualities or some attitudes? Um, uh, that is required on our part to be a good intercessor. Any qualities that make for a good intercessor? Okay, good relationship or strong relationship with God. Anything else? Hmm? 
yeah love and compassion because if we don't feel for others right um then it's hard to uh, sort of you know relate to what they are going through uh, we may be in our own worlds and we don't recognize the suffering or the pain that another person is going through but when we recognize that then we become a good intercessor because we can relate to their situation and so we will pray for them so moving in god's love and compassion for people is important we need to have a, a desire to see the change okay which means that let's say someone is sick we really want to see them well so then we will intercede till that happens or maybe somebody is uh, uh, so away from god but we desire to see them come back to god we will pray till they come back to god so that strong desire needs to be there to see that transformation next is identification you know the bible says in romans 12:15 rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep okay it simply means that we must have empathy or feel for the others now someone is very happy maybe they they graduated or they got a promotion they got married it's a birthday they're so happy but on the other hand you look at some people who um, may have faced uh, some uh, you know some disaster in their lives a loss or loss of money loss of a loved one uh, they are so grieved they are sad but when we as ministers of god we can feel for both if somebody is happy we bless them we rejoice together with what's happening in their lives but when somebody is sad you know we know how to actually uphold them in prayer that is very essential for us uh, as believers and as ministers of god to be able to uh, take charge in both situations now if you look at jesus the bible says he was he is our um, high priest isn't it in hebrews 4 verses 15 uh, 14 and sorry 14 and 16 we see that jesus christ he was a high priest who can sympathize with us meaning he can feel for us why because he too was tempted in every way that we are tempted imagine if he was not tempted right we can just tell jesus jesus how do you know how do you know temptation because you never went through it but now we can't say that because he has gone through every temptation that you and i go through but the bible says he was tempted in all points yet without sin so being tempted is not a sin right because satan does that to us sometimes we don't expect it but temptation suddenly comes you don't know what to do that is not sin but giving into temptation when you say okay fine let me do it that becomes a sin now jesus was tempted in all points but what does the bible say he is without sin and that is why because he faced the sufferings that we face that he is able to sympathize with us or he can understand us okay so we need to understand people that's the whole point uh, we also need boldness to pray for others and we also need to be persistent or have a never give up attitude so with this i'm going to stop we'll come back we we'll look at another subject regarding intercession okay so 10 minute break now everyone let's meet at 11 am thank you